Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a look at the Dragonfly KK13. It is a 170 degree pitch angle remote tilt adjustable 4K Wi-Fi FPV, 120 degree field of view camera, brushless motor, optical flow sensor, GPS RC quadcopter ready to fly. It comes in at about $179. It's got the 1406 brushless motor. It's got the foldable props as well as foldable arms. And to unfold the arms, it is as easy as that. The battery is removable. Just push this button and slide the battery backwards and it comes right off. And it's got a USB-C port to charge up the battery. And the battery is a LiPo 7.6 volt, 3000 milliamp battery. Good for about 28 minutes of flight time. It's got all these air ventilation slits all around the proprietary battery to keep it cool. And here's a power on and off push button switch and the LED level indicator. Short press the power switch to see what level of battery power is remaining on the battery. And to install the battery on the quadcopter, match up these three notches, make sure it's nice and flat and push it right in. The camera is a 4K Wi-Fi FPV, 120 degree field of view with a whopping 170 degree remote tilt adjustable camera and it sits on a two axis stabilizing gimbal. The FPV is 5G Wi-Fi and the FPV range is set to be 700 meters. The arms are in a staggered formation where the rear arms are slightly higher than the arms in the front. So the motor in the front is situated slightly lower than the motor in the rear. But the landing gear is shorter in the front and slightly longer in the rear and it has LED lights on each of the landing gear and also a little rubber tip so that it'll stick that landing. And on the bottom of the quadcopter we have an optical flow sensor, an LED light and a couple of antenna tips, one of which is for the receiver and the other one is for the Wi-Fi. And we have a built-in DVR, so you are able to record your photos and videos directly into the micro SD card. The quadcopter comes in this zippered carrying case where on the top lid there is a zippered pouch and on the bottom we have foam cutout, so everything is well protected. In the bag, we have a shoulder strap. We have a bag of goodies containing a full set of replacement props, a USB to USB-C charge cable to charge up the quadcopter battery, and a USB to micro USB cable to charge up the remote control internal battery, bag of screws, a screwdriver, and a couple of extra thumb grips for the remote control. We also have a user's manual in English and in Chinese, and we have the operating instruction for the Wi-Fi phone app. And here are the QR codes to download the Wi-Fi phone app, and the name of the app is called the Swift GPS phone app. It is a free downloadable phone app in the App Store. And here is the remote control. The remote control has antennas that flip out, but these are just for looks. They are non-functioning antennas, but it does have flip out hand grips that are functional as well as a flip out phone clip that is also functional. Here's the LCD display. On the top left shoulder, there is a speed controlling dial, a return to home button. On the right shoulder, we have the camera, tilt angle adjustable dial, and a photo and video button. Short presser to take a photo, long presser to take a video. On the left, we have the headless mode button and a master button. Now, I'm not sure what this master button does, but I think it switches the remote control from mode one to mode two. Here's a push button power switch, a takeoff button and a land button. The land button also doubles as the emergency stop button when you long press it. Some LED light indicators here, a GPS on and off switch, and bolt sticks to the bottom and in, as well as bolt sticks at the bottom and out, will arm the motors of the quadcopter. Bolt sticks at the bottom and left will calibrate the gyros, 
Both sticks that are bottom end to the right will initiate the compass calibration. Now it has a built-in battery, so there is the micro USB port to charge up that built-in battery. It is a 3.7 volt, 350 milliamp battery, which is good for about five hours of runtime. The transmitter distance is said to be about 1,200 meters, and the control height is said to be 150 meters. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the drone's camera on the left and the hat camera on the right. The wind is blowing at about 10 miles per hour. And the audio is from the hat camera. Now here are some photos recorded on the Wi-Fi phone app. The quality is 1280 by 720 pixels. And here are some photos recorded to the micro SD card. Now the quality is 2592 by 1520 pixels. Although it is clearer, some photos did not come out so well. Now here is a video recorded on the Wi-Fi phone app. Notice right away the frame drops or some kind of missed recordings. Now the quality is 1280 by 720 pixels. Now there is also a battery sag issue when multiple turns are performed. Here it hits the ground by itself and comes back up. So there is definitely a battery sag issue. The camera, however, does have a cool 85 degree down tilt and it is remotely controllable. The recording of this flight on the micro SD card was corrupted and was unplayable. Now here is a video recording recorded onto the micro SD card. Here I am syncing cameras. And as you can see, there's a lot of breakup and dropped frames and the quality is just not good at all now here's the same video recording recorded onto the wi-fi phone app it is a lot better and the quality of the 720p recorded onto the wi-fi phone app is decent but it does have issues as well Now, one of the cool things about this quadcopter is that it is able to remotely up tilt the camera angle up to 85 degrees as well as 85 degrees down tilt so a total of 170 degrees up tilt and down tilt but what good is it when the quality of the recording is not reliable now i was making plans to do a flight test to test all of the gps functions like return to home but decided to end the video here with a clip of a recording recorded to the Wi-Fi phone app. And by the way, the same recording that was supposed to be recorded to the micro SD card was again corrupt. Now, it could be that the unit I am testing is a one of a kind bad unit and does not represent all of the other units of this brand of quadcopter. 
So be safe if you are interested in getting this quadcopter for yourself and look at the other reviews before your purchase. So that'll do it for this video of the Dragonfly KK13. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Have a great day. Fly safe and be safe everyone and we'll see you again next time.